Disabled people have a catch cry that is nothing about us without us. And that has been a large um, part of impelling me to be a voice from my community, articulating the concerns of New Zealand's largest minority and seeing the connections with um, other people who are marginalised by processes and um, ways of operating. I think we have expectations of belonging in our community and if you're on the margins it's pretty hard to get to feel like you truly belong. I see this group as a real opportunity to, to widen the ways in which people who can have a voice, <coughs> can belong, can participate and may well be able to influence the changes. I'm eternally optimistic. But um, I believe that we can, we can present something that will have an influence <coughs> on the outcome. I also am aware <coughs> that disabled people now have a convention on the rights of persons with disabilities that has greatly increased our expectations of belonging, of participation. We co-wrote that. That's what I want for all the people who are likely to be affected by, by the possibilities that have already been raised and by the lack of opportunities to participate to date. I'm looking forward to hearing from any number of people and I, I have a, a real confidence that there are going to be a lot of themes in common and I, I just hope that we get these, these opportunities to participate that Mike has been talking about so well. Thank you. My starting point is the United Nations Universal Declaration on Human Rights which recognises social security as a basic human right that all citizens have a right to expect as part of their humanity, as part of their citizenship. As the decades go by, the way in which we organise social security for ourselves must also change. We are at a point where the government is reviewing welfare as part of the cornerstone of our social security system. In that review it is essential that the voice of civil society is able to be expressed and presented to the government as part of its deliberations. I see our work as having a specific focus on listening to people in civil society, people who are engaged on a day-to-day -day basis with providing practical help and support to people, to fellow citizens within the framework of New Zealand's social security system. There is a depth of expertise in those people that it will be our responsibility to seek out, to listen to, to analyse and finally to report back in our alternative report. Um, my experience that I bring to the table is, is primarily as a teacher of welfare law at the at Victoria University and the law faculty. Two things strike me. One is that the history of welfare law in this country is punctuated by a series of watersheds. So for example we have in 1898 the watershed passage of the old, um, age, of the old age pension act. Um, Another watershed, the 1938 passage of the Social Security Act, the first Social Security Act, the 1964 consolidation of that legislation, um, the 1972 commission that Mike's already talked about, the 1991 benefit cuts and the effects that that had on vast numbers of 
people in this country. And it's hard to speak with hindsight, but I wonder if we are, and I suspect we are now, at the edges of another watershed. So let us just keep that in mind when we come to look back on our work in years to come, how we contributed to this process. Being on the edge of something is a feeling I have at the moment and I, um, I look forward to seeing how we can contribute to what may be a watershed. How do we want, what sort of society do we want to have mm, mm. in years to it's come? What sort of society have we been? Are we really that different? And I suspect we may not like some of the answers that we see. Although our welfare system, both in context of ACC and as well as in social security law itself, has been founded on a set of principles. Now those principles can be maddening to understand and how they apply in everyday life, but they have been things that people have returned to time and time again. But there's always been a difference between the principles and the legal system that has implemented those principles, or in, in many cases not implemented those principles. So I see my role as a legal academic to, to also be mindful of how do, what, how do how the changes um, forthcoming in the welfare system impact upon the legal system. How, what sort of laws do we want to implement uh, this, this new day, this new dawn, if you like, in welfare? And in this country in particular, there's a diff diff difference in the, in the implementation of the legal system and its application by those who work with the laws every day, case managers, for example. So there are lots of things for us to think about that flow from principles. We want to have some sort of consistency, I guess, this is my thinking anyway, between principles, the legal system, and the, the application of that legal system. So um, once again, I, um, I pay tribute to my colleagues, and I, I also would say that in terms of participation, it's very important that the voices, from my perspective, the voices of Māori are heard mm. in this process. And if I can help to facilitate that in any way, um, I would, I, I, I would I look forward to doing that. So, who are not here? He put out the kai pai pai te ne wa na rai ra. Kia ora. Kia ora.